So what to do to prepare for your PhD? There are a few things that you should do to prepare for a PhD once you have been accepted and you are waiting for that all important first day. Interestingly, these things have nothing to do with your PhD topic or reading literature before your official start. There are many more important things to focus on. Let's take a look. Create a PhD bucket list. One of the most important things to do before starting your PhD is to write a quick bucket list of items that you would feel sad if you missed out on the on missed out on for the next few years. This list might include meeting up with friends or family, traveling overseas, reading that book you always wanted to read or any other activity you would feel sad if you missed out on during your PhD. Ensuring that you enter your PhD without having this thing looming over you, your head will make it much easier to stay focused and avoid any regrets from the distraction of a significant and long-term project. Go and see your friends or family in a different country or city. Take the long weekend trip with your partner that you have been talking about for the last few months. Finish that online course that you always told yourself you would finish. Whatever it is, please don't put it off until the end of your PhD. Now is the time to get those unfinished PhD bucket list things off your to-do list. With all of these bucket items completed, you will feel much more focused. Discover the tools. During your PhD, you will rely on various tools to help you work smarter and not harder. This come in four different flavors, software tools, hardware tools, specific tools, and health tools. Software tools. Find all PhD specific apps and online productivity that will help you during your PhD. You are not interested in purchasing them all or doing anything beyond knowing they exist. Having a broad selection of options will allow you to choose the appropriate one when you get to a sticking point in your PhD or a need help in a certain area. More apps and productivity tools are coming out every year for academics and PhD students. Make sure you know about them. Work smarter, not harder. Hardware tools. A good future-proof laptop is an essential part of a PhD project. Some universities provide a laptop upon starting your PhD, while others expect you to bring your own. I recommend purchasing a laptop with all of the processing power you will need to perform your PhD research. Some people will need a strong GPU laptop that can handle 3D rendering while other will get away with a less powerful laptop for word processing and internet searching. Specific tools. Do you have any specific tools required for your PhD? Those Tools. These tools may include notebooks, diaries or equipment that will make your PhD much better. For example, I needed a good set of lab, personal protective equipment and a nice pen to help me write down my experiments. Health related. Find all of the tools that help you. I have tried a number of them and find guided meditation apps and breathing guides very helpful for staying mindful and reducing my anxiety. See the list above for my recommendation. Spend a couple of afternoons searching for these tools and acquiring them if you have the means to. Get, ex get used to your new surroundings. Before starting your PhD, it would help if you visit your new university or institute to work out all of the essential areas like finding the quiet study zone where you will be working. The first day of a PhD can be very stressful if you enter unfamiliar situation and locations. 
this exploration only needs to happen a couple of days before you start but the better you can be some other ideas of getting used to your new surroundings include finding the food on campus many universities have great food available on site but the privatization of many universities food halls means it can get a little bit expensive look for options outside of the university where the best food is if in doubt bring a lunch box from home grab a campus map and go for an explore have a good walk around and link up places you will visit most including your desk meeting space supervisor's office admin office libraries food accommodation and any areas you will be performing research admin universities are full of bureaucracy and red tape you may need to spend an afternoon getting all your university administration sorted including your student or library card parking card technical staff and access to the university online software find out about extra work you can pick up on campus to improve your finances example tutoring making marking papers student support etc do as much as you feel comfortable with and you have time for there is no need to go through everything in the above list but getting as much as done possible will mean that you can walk into your first day as a phd student with much clearer head you won't have to worry about all the annoying little admin things that can take up so much time and kill momentum and mood when you are most excited about your future work during a phd congratulations on getting admitted into a phd student as a phd student the first few days of a phd are not the time to ease yourself into the new lifestyle or give yourself a couple of months off setting the right routine can help you build the and keep the momentum surviving your surviving your phd once you have decided on the topic supervisor university and all other preliminary questions are about staying focused productive and looking after yourself to the point where you can handle many years of doing your phd research this section will cover the common issues phd student face and some of the essential habits that you need to adhere to from day 1 of your phd let's get you acting and thinking like a successful phd student of course there is no possible way to cover every individual issue that would arise during a phd but many students face the same issue no matter the phd subject or the country in which they are researching essential habits to set from day 1 Surviving your PhD means setting foundational habits and routines from day one. Many PhD students like to ease in to their PhD. I don't blame them. Getting to the first day of your PhD can seem like an uphill struggle, and it is only natural to take a moment to take your foot off the accelerator or gas, as my US friends might say. Unfortunately these are uh, these early habits of reduced commitment and diligence during your PhD can have massive long term implications. I was certainly one for going easy on myself in my PhD's early and mid stages. The lack of commitment meant meant a bit of rush to get publishable result towards the end of my PhD. The good news is that a quick mind shift and reinforcement of commitment to your phd can quickly turn things around if you are starting to fall behind no matter what stage of your phd you have decided to take things seriously here are some foundational and essential habits you need to cultivate for daily improvement and near guarantee of your finishing of finishing your phd time blocking time blocking is one of the essential habits you get you can get into during your phd 
take a moment to jot down regular activities that you perform every week that could be writing researching reading communicating admin work such as email and any teaching that you may have to do placing this essential weekly work commitments into a workable weekly schedule means that you will always find time for the most important things for your phd i like to work in one and half hour blocks i set timer on my computer or smartphone and do not change activity or focus until the timer has run down it took a little bit of time to get to one and half hours worth of focused working work if that seems too long to stay focused you can start with 45 minutes and slowly work your way up to a longer time over a couple of months turning your attention to key priority to a key priority to your research and phd thesis submission from the first week of your phd will pay off in the long run if you do not have enough task to fill a full one and half hour time block you can batch together task until you have enough to keep you busy for one and half hours for example if you only have a few emails to send wait until you have about one hour's worth of email or admin activities before setting aside a time block working on the things that matter the most most things that most things that we do in life can be completed by focusing on up to three key activities we sometimes mistake busyness for productivity and make ourselves unnecessarily stressed by filling our day with non essential actions and task i could spend a full day busily working on several fragmented task and feel like i have gotten nowhere i am sure that you have experienced the same feeling there are some key activities that you should do first and protect at all cost for most phd students that could be finding and reading papers to formulate new ideas and understand the latest movement in the field creating data whatever in a laboratory or using other techniques to generate new knowledge you should protect time dedicated to generating novel data and ideas you will not get your phd without it communicating results communicating results of your research meeting with your supervisors to talk about your progress or attending conferences and online symposia for researchers in your field there are many ways that other people phd students academics and professional staffs like to stack up your time like to suck up your time if the activities do not contribute to your phd's main component you should consider whether or not they are truly important learning to say no is very important skill to learn learning to say no to people professionally and politely will help you during your phd and help you afterwards in your professional and personal life we all only have so much time each day and find a phd student can only and a phd student can easily get distracted by side projects unreasonable request for help or research assistance and much more a phd will require you to prioritize being a bit selfish with your time feels rude at times but i have never had a bad response from saying no in a right in the right way i try not to hide behind excuses or lies i often say that something is not priority for me or that i am focusing on other things create some soft no responses for yourself and use them frequently reading reading is one of the things that many phd students put off the most because it doesn't feel like it is productive or immediately useful however setting aside at least one focused reading block per week for searching for and reading any new papers in your research field will help you in several different ways the most important thing we can do during our phd is formulating new ideas however these ideas rarely come from thin air or moments of inspiration our brain are amazing at being creative connecting ideas and making new ideas 
relevant to our PhD work. Feed your brain new ideas and information regularly to keep it creative. Reading regularly helps also helps when it comes to writing your peer reviewed papers and theses. Academic writing is far from easy as it is very technical and dense. The more familiar you can become with the style of writing that you will eventually be expected to write will help you during any article writing or thesis chapter drafting. Eat the frog. An important part of getting a PhD is facing the difficult and unglamorous task that you don't want to do. In a book by Brian Tracy, eating the frog is introduced. Your frog is the biggest, most important task you are most likely to procrastinate on if you don't do something about it. Everyone has an activity that they do not want to do. You will procrastinate over that activity for as long as possible before time, pressure or guilt or anxiety forces you to forces you into action. One of the best ways to overcome this procrastination is to decide that you will tackle the most difficult and annoying task on, you, on your to-do list every morning. Anytime you procrastinate on an important task, you delay stress and anxiety until later in your PhD. Do this enough and your PhD will be far more stressful than it needs to be. The anxiety not only builds up, there seems to be a multiplying factor when too many things are left to do, too many things are left to the last minute. Make a deal with yourself to eat the frog every morning and as often as possible. It will help increase the momentum and be even more productive throughout the day. When the most important task is out of the way, it will give you a sense of satisfaction and relief too. It's a lifelong skill that will help you in your future career. Incidentally, it is why I love running in the morning. I'm getting the worst bit of the day out of the day, out of the way. We all love thinking that thinking that the easy admin task will help us build up the momentum. The reality is that understanding and that delineating between important tasks and those are not important is the key finishing of your PhD on time. Avoiding comparison from very early on your PhD in your PhD you will be comparing your progress to your colleagues and people around you. The truth is that everybody's PhD is unique to them and the journey they will take will also be very different. If you have planned well in the stages before your PhD, it will be more likely that your PhD will continue progressing with only minor bumps. However, many PhDs go through very rough patches where everything seems to be going wrong because of unforeseen circumstances. Looking around at your PhD cohort is a bad way of determining whether or not you are making progress. Only compare your current situation to yourself one month ago or one year ago. As long as you can see progress including failure, you are headed in the right direction, no matter how slow and tedious it may feel. Another reason why the comparison is bad idea is that if you ask any PhD student about their research, they are likely to only talk about the best bits of their research and not tell you about the true struggles and doubts they are having. We are all guilty of putting on our best face, meeting up with people with who you can speak openly and share experiences freely will help you understand your feelings and help you learn that what you are currently feeling is common among PhD researchers and academics alike. Regular communication with the supervisor team. One of the last foundation and essential habits you need to cultivate is the regular communication with your supervisor team. Academic PhD supervisor can be very busy people. 
it can be months before they think about asking you for an update in academia the squeaky wheel squeaky wheel gets the oil a lot of the time and if you are not forcing yourself into their inbox or office it is very easy for them to ignore their commitment as a supervisor planning a regular meeting with your phd supervisors in person is very important if they cannot meet you in person i have seen students and postdoctoral researchers email a powerpoint summary of their work to their supervisor make time for communication and interaction with your supervisor team as they will help you identify any early stage issues and they will have a much better idea if you are at risk of failure